Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming kind of a fun video. This one is basically one that I've seen go around the internet and it is reasons why I would unsubscribe from a YouTube channel. Now, this is definitely my opinion, so you guys, please don't get offended. It's a list that I cooked up and I've seen a few videos, so I've definitely picked up some inspiration along the way. I feel like the whole YouTube community is making videos like this now, so definitely check out some of the other videos as well for inspiration. I just think these are really fun videos for you guys to kind of be inspired because as much as I like to create content for YouTube, I am a huge lover of YouTube. I love to watch YouTube, so I get really sucked in and I have been watching YouTube for quite some time so I've seen a lot of this and have had personal experiences with some of the reasons that like are on my list so if you're curious just keep watching hey guys so if you are wondering why I look different in this part of the video it's because I thought I was filming and I actually wasn't so I didn't have this clip for my video and I figured instead of refilming the whole thing, I would just insert this clip. Now, I've never actually had to do that before, so bear with me. But I wanted to film number one and number two because this is important. And the number one reason I unsubscribe from YouTube channels, and I actually wrote this down. I wrote down, I stopped drinking the Kool-Aid. Now, Kool-Aid has been like my favorite thing to use all of a sudden in my YouTube videos, but it honestly is because when I think of my like evolution in YouTube and my lifespan on YouTube and how much I've changed as a human being, I've definitely also progressed in the people I watch and like my tastes has changed and so that's definitely impacted who I'm watching on YouTube. So to start off, I remember back in the day, um, I started watching like Dulce Candy. I used to love watching her videos. Then I kind of got on like the Jaclyn Hill train for a while. And I used to watch Ready Said Glam. Does anybody remember her? Um, she actually quit YouTube um, a couple of years ago and I always wonder like what happened to her and I'd be so curious to know. I don't believe her channel is anymore but correct me if I'm wrong and with watching her I used to watch Laura Lee. I used to love Laura Lee. I used to love Manny and I yeah those are the two big YouTubers that I really really liked was Laura and Manny. And then all of a sudden, you know, you kind of saw them progress in their careers and their subscriber count went up and the more you watch YouTube, I feel like the more aware you are of kind of what's happening in the beauty community. And after a while, I really just fell out of love with some of those bigger YouTubers that I used to follow constantly and now I don't watch them at all and now I'm really into like the smaller YouTubers like Angelica Nyquist and, and Paulina Beauty and there's so many YouTubers that I love to follow that are smaller channels that don't get a lot of PR and are very just like honest and opinionated and I get, gain a lot of satisfaction from watching those channels because I, I can relate a lot more to them and also their ages have are very similar to mine so I have a lot more connection with that type of personality so yeah I just simply stopped drinking the Kool-Aid when it comes to some of those larger channels and thinking like everything that came out of them was perfect and you just realize it's not and that's okay and I'm not saying anybody that watches them is a bad person or anything like that it's just that you find reasons why the personality types don't mesh and you move on and that's okay so that is the nature of the beast and the second point I want to talk about why I unsubscribe is I'm actually kind of a snot when it comes to quality. I'm not saying that if you start out you need to go buy the most expensive camera, the most expensive lighting or anything like that by any means. But I do like videos that are somewhat edited just so it looks like you put in some effort um, because I think sometimes people film and it's like shaky and all of this like lighting issues there's something in my eye so the quality is a little bit off and that kind of bothers me because I feel like you know with anything any hobby you do want to see progression and if somebody started YouTube like eight years ago and they have like 50,000 subscribers and they're still filming with bad lighting and all that stuff it almost makes me wonder like if they bought their followers I don't really know any channels like that off the top of my head but I definitely have seen a lot of Instagram accounts where I'm like 
there's nothing personal in any of these posts like I don't even know how they have this many followers but I'm digressing now but yeah I kind of really like people that put a little bit of effort in their channel and try to edit their videos and make them concise and you know make them a little bit of uh, production value I don't think it needs to be a movie with like cutouts and like CGI film animation and the makeup is applying itself it doesn't need to be that it doesn't need to be fake but I do admire channels that do have good quality and sometimes bad quality does make me unsubscribe because I'm not really gaining anything out of the video at that point if I can't see your face if it's a tutorial or the coloring is off so I can't see the product and things like that so I don't know if you guys agree with me let me know but I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to my original footage and I would unsubscribe from a channel channel is skin tone. For me, it doesn't really make sense to watch people that are, especially like tutorial based channels that don't have my skin tone because it's hard for me to judge. So it's not really like a, oh, well, if you don't have my skin tone, like, fuck you. It's more so like, it doesn't even make sense for me to follow your channel because we're so unrealistically far apart in our colors. It like, whatever looks good on you is very rarely going to look good on me. So that's another reason I wouldn't stay subscribed. Okay, another reason that would cause me to unsubscribe is if you are being incredibly bougie and over the top and unrealistic on your channel. It's a real turnoff for me. I think it's so cool when people, you know, achieve that level of success where they have every designer bag and blah, 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 blah. But that's not my life, you know? So I have like one designer bag and that's it. And I don't know if I'll ever get more or if I'll ever have a closet full of designer goods. And it's not that I'm saying that seeing somebody else have something makes me feel bad, but it's just so, like, to me, it's, like, unrelatable to the point of, like, ridiculousness. Like, when Jaclyn Hill did her closet tour, it was just, like, oh, my God, I'm, like, cringing for you because, I mean, maybe you're going after a classier, more, like, a higher-end market now, Jaclyn Hill, but... I can guarantee you that most of your subscribers that watch your videos don't have a closet like that and a lot of them I'm sure felt really bad about themselves and to me it's more so it's like okay like I get it like I have a three bedroom house in Barber, North Dakota like I'm not trying to be anything that I'm not but I don't think people younger than me have that mental awareness people my age do I feel like social media has distorted so many people's understanding of what's real and what's not and I feel like somebody could really drive themselves to almost depression watching videos like that so personally for me it's just unrelatable and so I will not subscribe to channels like that the next point I wanted to talk about is clickbait. Now, a lot of girls bought this up in their video of reasons they would unsubscribe. And I think it's a valid reason. Clickbait is so annoying. It's like, if you can't just tell me what it is, like, don't even, like, why? Why are you making clickbait videos? Like, oh my gosh, I'm quitting YouTube. And it's like, oh, I'm just going to take a break from YouTube. Oh my God, I just went to the hospital. Okay, I got a paper cut. Like, so annoying. Sometimes I watch the clickbaits and I'm like, Karen, come on, you know better, you know? Ugh, it's the worst. Now, another reason I would unsubscribe to a channel is if you are lying to me. I know there's a lot of booty gurus that get caught up in their own little tall tales and it's a little cray and uh, I think, you know, ain't nobody got time for that and I've definitely unsubscribed from channels where I'm like, that story makes no sense. Some of these drama channels, I know people like to give them a tough time, but I think drama channels are a necessary evil in the beauty community because these people are celebrities too. I mean, just because the paparazzi isn't chasing after them doesn't mean that they're not accountable for their actions. So, yeah, I just, uh, just like, uh, like this whole Tati thing, it's like, come on, Tati, you, like, what did you think? You were going to come out with something that people actually have to ingest? Now... Granted, makeup you put on your eyeballs, if your eyeball swells up and you, like, form a disease, it is what it is. You have sensitive eyes. But what if you, somebody takes Halo Beauty and it kills them? Like, then what? You know, you can't just keep hiding behind clinically proven. Like, I know legally you can use the terms clinically proven, but that doesn't mean it's okay. So, uh, it is also one I saw a lot of girls mention, and I had to put it in my list as well, where... Um, it kind of ties into that whole money thing where it's like every review is a positive re review. 
I definitely like channels that have a bit of sass. I don't like channels where they're like, I don't swear on my channel because I want to be, you know, child friendly or I want my mom, like moms to be able to watch their channel around their, their kids. If you don't swear on your channel because you don't swear, that's fine. But if you actually swear on a regular basis and you're not swearing on your channel just so like YouTube doesn't strike you or because you're not going to appeal to advertisers or you're, you know, trying to draw in the younger age group, that's fucked up because that's not who you really are. So for me, that and like the positive reviews like kind of tie together. It's just like, be real. If you don't feel like you can give a real review because something was sent to you in PR, like, it's so messed up to me. I don't even know where to start with that. I feel like that's like a personal problem where you should just be buying your own makeup so you can say whatever the fuck you want and then find some other way to make money. You know what I mean? I just, I just can't. Okay, this is honestly a huge one for me, and I'm surprised I haven't heard anyone mention it, but I guess it kind of like ties in with the liars. The no fact checking. I have clocked so many YouTubers, bigger YouTubers, that talk about products and then they're like, uh, I don't know, it's like it might be out yet, or is, is it out yet, or I think it's launching this day, or they say like the wrong thing about the product, like it's a matte foundation and they call it like a dewy foundation, and it's like, how much makeup are you going through that you can't even keep these products straight? Like, and that's your full-time job. That's like being a doctor and being like, well, I mean, I'm a surgeon, but you know, like, I, I mean, I can try and work on your leg. I'm not really sure. Like, no, like get your shit together and give us the facts. Give us the numbers. Give us all the information where we can get it. Link in the description. It's just, I just can't do non-fact-checking beauty gurus. I remember one time, back in the day, I was watching Jackie Ina, and she butchered something about a foundation, and I, like, immediately unsubscribed from her channel. Now, I know a lot of people love her channel, and she is definitely one of the bigger YouTubers. That, for the most part, isn't shady, but, oh, it's such a turnoff when it's like, that's your full-time job. Like, I can't fuck up at my full-time job, so what makes YouTubers think that it's okay for them not to get their facts straight. Like, I can understand, like, a mistake here and there, but this is, like, on purpose. Or, like, th remember that video that Jen Loves Reviews did on Jacqueline Hill, where she, like, analyzed one of Jacqueline Hill's, like, YouTube Get Ready With Me videos? I loved that video. I don't know if it's still up on Jen Loves Reviews channel, but we need more people like that making videos where she's, like, why did she say, like, oh, this is my first time trying it out, but I love it. Like, why? <laughs> like, just then just say like it's my first time trying it out it seems great i'll update you on it later but this is not what they do they just are like oh my god i'm obsessed i just used this for the first time it's like god i roll like my eyes roll to the back of my head like i can't even handle it number 10 reason why i would unsubscribe from a youtube channel lazy fucking youtubers there's one in particular that i can think of i followed her on youtube forever and then at one point I was following her on Snapchat. I was watching her Snapchats pretty much every day. And this lady, granted, works from home, has like kids that are all in like high school. So she doesn't have like a baby at home to take care of or anything. Grown ass lady, works from home, cannot get a YouTube video up like to save her life. She maybe uploads like once a week if we're lucky. And every time I watch her on Snapchat, she's like, I'm gonna film today, I'm gonna film today. And then it's like the end of the day, she's like, oh my gosh, then this happened and I couldn't film today. And it like takes her so long to get videos uploaded that it's like mind numbing. I'm like, how do you have 100,000 plus subscribers when you are so inconsistent? It blows my mind because there are so many YouTubers out there uploading daily and these people have jobs, they have kids, like Hot Mess Ness has like five kids or something. I mean, it just blows my mind. Like we're all making time to film and this is your full-time job. And then these companies send her so much PR and I'm like, why? Like, why are you sending her all this PR? She maybe uploads like once a freaking month. Like she's literally the worst YouTuber on planet Earth and I'm about ready to unsubscribe. <laughs> Ah, uh, why? Okay, number 11. This one, I think, I don't know if Angelica mentioned this in her video, but I really agreed with it, so I wanted to put it in my video where she said, like, beauty gurus that do, like, the thumbnails where it's like, oh my god, I'm, like, super ugly, and then, like, how to go from, like, a zero to a hundred, 
or like uh, from like a zero to a ten, like how to be like super pretty if you're not. And the one YouTuber that does this all the time and now it like beyond irks me is Patrick Starr. He'll like make himself like, he'll take a picture of himself with no makeup on, which is totally fine, but I feel like he'll go like that and then he'll put a picture of himself like dressed up, photoshopped to the nines and let me like, and how to go from like this to like this. And it's like, why do you do that? Like, what message are you trying to send out to little kids that watch you or teenage girls? Like, why? Just just say, like, here's my before and after. That's totally valid. Just take a regular picture. But don't, like, you know, try to push your teeth forward. Like, buck teeth are not attractive or zits are not attractive. Like, that's just a normal part of life. And it just bugs me so much that he does that. It's, like, all of his thumbnails. He's like, from zero to ten, how to look pretty. And it's like, please stop, because you're really probably going to hurt somebody's feelings. So that one really irks me. So the last one of reasons why I would unsubscribe from a channel is low interactivity. I do get kind of annoyed because I am I know there are some people that will comment on people's videos, like every single one. I do that with a few YouTubers that I really like. I'll comment on all of their videos. I still feel like I could get better at that, but when you don't hear from them and they don't have that many subscribers, it's just disappointing because then it's like you inevitably end up feeling like, oh, is it getting to their head, blah, 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 blah. It's not like a 100% reason why I would unsubscribe because I know there's two sides to that story. Even as a content creator myself, like I don't have that many subscribers, but sometimes you don't get notified every time somebody comments on a video or if they comment like, further like on an older video it doesn't always pop up on top which is a real pain in the ass and I also know from watching Lauren May Beauty she says her comments section gives her anxiety so a lot of the time she won't reply to her comments on YouTube but I feel like then she's put it out there which I think is nice for her subscribers because I remember commenting on her channel when it was much smaller and I never heard back from her I'm like you only have like 20,000 subscribers, like how are you not able to comment back to me? But I remember in a more recent video she kind of explained that she got like anxiety when her comments were like blowing up and I get it and I I can respect that if she, if that's genuinely her issue. So keep that in mind. I've heard a lot of people say like, oh low interactivity will cause me to unsubscribe but I think some people do have a valid reason. So. That is like a eh, halfway reason why I would unsubscribe, but I do, I do try to keep in mind that different people have different issues and different levels of commitment to their YouTube channels. Now, since I am a content creator as well, I thought I would throw in a little wild card, a little twist for you guys. Now, I wrote down my reasons for why I, I block subscribers. So I told you why I would unsubscribe. Well, now I'm telling you as a content creator why I would block subscribers. And the number one reason and the only reason I am going to block subscribers or anyone that's commenting on my channel is if you are rude and you are attacking my other subscribers. I had, I don't have a lot of foolery going on my channel, but I remember when my Pat McGrath Labs review came out for the Ashna palettes, I had a few little trolls on my channel and they were coming for me and then they started like fighting with my subscribers that are like my regular subscribers and that were trying to like defend me and it like turned into this thing and I'm like honestly like are these five people even worth it like are these people worth me feeling upset and hurt and all that stuff so that is the only time I will block subscribers is if they're causing me undue stress like it is so fun to have really huge subscriber numbers but I have to remind myself it's not about the subscribers it's about my community here on YouTube and I just want to have fun I want this to be easy I don't want to sit here and feel bad about myself second guess myself I don't want you guys to feel bad about yourselves or question yourselves or like why you like my channel whatever the fuck so yeah I just thought it'd be fun I think it'd be really fun for more content creators to make reasons why they block their subscribers um, and add it to part of this little video but yeah I just I feel like we could save ourselves a lot of drama on YouTube if people weren't subscriber hungry and they were more concerned about protecting their YouTube friends and family so 
I don't know, let me know what you guys think. I feel like I've been blabbering so much in all of my videos. So I am going to cut this one short and head out of here. I will catch you on my next one. And thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.